Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Paper Crafting Thursday. I'm Leslie Watkins. I hope everybody's well today. Since we're getting close to Halloween, I thought this would be a great time to do a Halloween gift card. So I'm going to be using the Potions and Spells Bundle. And the stamps look like this. And the dies look like this. I've done a little bit of die cutting ahead of time, but we do need to do some heat embossing. And um, so for that, I'm using the silver heat embossing powder. I have my equipment here. And I'm going to begin by just taking my black cardstock and putting a little bit of this pumice on there. I think it's pumice. And, uh, and that's going to remove any stickiness that in places that I don't want the powder to stick to. And then the stamping I'm going to do is of this really cute little black cat. Looks like my little black cat, Cersei. And also there is a raven here. I want to get that raven. I saw so many ravens at the Grand Canyon last February. I fell in love with them. And uh, let's see, anything else here? I think that's it for the moment. So let's just go ahead. I'm using the Versamark ink. I'm gonna get my foam pad out. The Versamark ink is a sticky ink, so it's going to act like glue. And I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of these because I have a pretty good idea that I'm going to need more than one. I'm going to do one more. And then my raven. I do I think I can squeeze one more in here. Okay, there we go. And sprinkle a little powder on here. sure I get all the places and sweep off a little bit of the excess give it a good tap and that's ready to go oh let me do this do a little housekeeping here Let 
this tray is not only great for collecting your embossing powder, but it's also great when you're cleaning seeds, as my partner, the ethnobotanist, will tell you. He thinks that this is a terrific tool for cleaning seeds. All right. Now I'm going to turn my heat tool on in just a second, and it's pretty noisy. So I'm going to mute the sound for just a moment. Okay, I'm back, and I think you can see the beautiful shine I have now. And I'm going to get out my trimmer, and I'm just I'm going to uh, just cut these apart to make them a little more manageable. I'll save for later and clear off the area here so you can see a little bit better. Okay, and I see we've got lots of company now. I see Ginger. Hi, Ginger. And Beverly, how are how are you doing? And uh, and Linda, Beverly, did you get a lot of wind? I'm sure you did. All right, so here we go. My plates are getting a little bit curvy, so I'm just flipping them over so that they hold better. And here's my spooky cat. 
and my raven. All right, I'm gonna have to hopefully not get my head in the camera here, but I'm, I wanna get this placed nicely. It looks pretty good. You ever notice how some people do this perfectly every single time? I am not one of those people. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's see. Let's see what we get. Not so bad. Okay. All right, so... Now there will be possibly a little more die cutting, but let's see, let's see how far we can get along before we have to do more. Now I do know that I'm going to need these bubbles and I have a piece of the granny apple green that I'm going to stamp on and I'm going to want let's see I think I think that's good I think we'll be able to use the uh, these things I haven't used this set before, so I'm learning as we go. And uh, has anybody had a chance to use this set? And um, if you've made some cute cards, please share them so that we can see. I'm going to go ahead and stamp. I may have to do a little bit of fussy cutting here. But that's all right. I don't mind. I'm just going to stamp these bubbles. And again, I'm going to do this a couple of times because probably going to have to make several treat holders for all my goblins. I'm going to go ahead and get a few done. So there are my cute bubbles in the granny apple green. And I'm going to get another piece of the same color and this time I'm going to cut out. So I'm going to go back to my die cutting machine. Thankfully, I did do a lot of die cutting ahead of time so that you don't have to watch me do too much because I know you all know how to do this. And just in case you don't know how to do this, if you're brand new here, I will be posting a link after the video that is a list of all the supplies that I've used to create this card. So you can check that out after the live video. Okay, and here we go. My bubbles. Let me get those out of there. Where's my poker tool? All right. 
I think we're ready to start doing a little bit of assembly. This card is going to be a gift card holder card. Um, but I think, I'm hoping that it will also hold a piece of chocolate as a treat. So we'll see. We'll see how that works. And, um, and while I'm busy doing other things, I'm just going to take my stamps and put them on my stamp case for now. To keep them out of the way and, I, and so they won't get lost. Here are my adorable spooky friends. And let's cut this out real quick. Okay, so I'll save that. I'm just going to do a little trim around some of these bubbles. go. the bottom. Okay. All right. Let's see what we have now. Um, let's see. Uh, so Beth, Beth is in the villages in Florida and, uh, and she said a lot of wind and rain, but, um, but they're very fortunate there. They never lost power and the damages weren't so bad. So um, thank goodness for that, Beverly. And, and for my, my followers in other places in Florida who had more of the brunt of the Hurricane Milton, I hope that, um, that you're all right and uh, all, the, all our best thoughts and, and prayers for you. So um, let us know how you're doing. We want to know. And if there's anything that we can, we can do for you. Okay, so now I've, I've assembled various odds and ends here. So you can see I've got some embellishments. I've got some of the black dimensionals. I've got some, um, some different, there's some nice orange dots that could be fun. I've got this adorable, I love this twine, so hopefully we'll find a use for that. And for my card base, I've got a piece of the black card stock. And this is a standard size four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. And getting a little crowded here. I did go ahead and do some die cutting ahead of time just to make it go a little bit quicker. So I've got my my adorable broom. I really like this broom. And I went ahead and I cut two pieces for the broomstick because I wanted that to be a little bit sturdier. And let me see if I can find a glue that has some glue in it. Uh-oh. There it is. Oh, it's not even opened. Better yet. 
Okay, hold on. We got glue coming out and I don't even have the wrapping off of here yet. Okay. Okay, let's see if I can clean that up a little bit. That works. Line those up. I just want it to be a little bit stiffer. There we go. And then the, let's see which way this goes. like that. All right, this glue is coming out really fast, so I'm going to have to remove a little excess. Took off too much. Actually, let me see. Do I want it? I think I want to put the the broomstick to the back of the broom. Get that on there straight ish. I need a little more glue. All right, I'm making kind of a mess here, so let me try that again. I'm gonna let that set up a, a minute before I put it together because the, um, the end of the broomstick is so tiny that it's hard to to um, get enough of a hold on there with the glue. So I'm just going to give that a minute to set up so it stays on there nicely. Get it straight. Okay, that should do it that aside to dry. Now, the, the way this card works is I have this insert that goes on the inside, and this is what's going to hold the gift card in place. So I'm going to start by applying glue to one side. Okay, and then I'm going to place that, and I know this is going to be hard for you to see on the black background, but I'm going to place that right in the middle, right up to the score line, but not over the score line. Okay, because I want that to be able to fold nicely. That's pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of glue on the sides because they're going to glue to one another. And then another line of glue on the back flap. All right, and then this is going to fold in like so. 
I'm, and then I'm going to hold that in place, making sure that my creases are nice, and then flip this over. And give that a good burnish and then fingers crossed it'll all come together just right okay, got a little excess glue I'll come back with my glue eraser in just a minute to clean that up. But there is the inside of my card. I'm taking off the excess glue to make sure that nothing sticks where I don't want it to stick. If you don't have a glue eraser, you need a glue eraser. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. And I think I got all the glue off there. That looks fine. Maybe a drop in the edge here. Okay. All right, so there's the inside of the card. And I'm gonna put this in for my message. And I'm thinking I might want to put that I might want to put the cat on the inside, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, I do want to put a sentiment in here though. So I'm going to go back to my stamp set. And I think I'll use the Double Double Boil and Trouble. Actually, I think I'm, I'm changing my mind. A little Hocus Pocus. I like that. I'm going to test this first because this is a new stamp pad. I just want to make sure it looks pretty good. And I'm going to put this off center slightly. go. <clears throat> All right, so now on the cover of the card, I need a base, and I think I'm going to continue with the 
pumpkin pie. Um, I think I need a bigger piece. All right, so I'm going to cut this down to three and three quarters by five. And here I'm going to set the scene with my cauldron and my raven. I'm going to go ahead and attach my bubbles. Zoom you in a little so you can see better. And just checking to see if there's any messages here. Everything looks okay. My bubbles and then of course have to have the the green slime because what would a cauldron be without green slime do any of you have trick-or-treaters coming to your houses do you um, do you get dressed up do you have candy ready for for the Ghosts and goblins. Okay, it looks like I haven't unpacked my tweezer yet, so I'm going to have to do this as best I can. Alright, so there is my brew, my witch's brew. And that's looking pretty good. And here's my raven. And I definitely want to get my broom in here. This broom is scored so you can actually bend it. But I think what I want to do is take that cute, um, let me see, Where's that twine? Oh, I guess that's it. Okay, so I think what I do is I want to take this and tie it around the base of the broom. Put a knot in that. Make sure it doesn't come apart. Now a little bow. With my dimensionals, put 
them on the inside of my broom, just like so. My raven's going to get a couple of dimensionals. And actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and put my cauldron up as well. Okay, but I'm going to glue down the, the bubbles, so half and half. So, hold that for just a moment. Get my broom started. One of these days, I'm going to get out all of my collection of Halloween stamps and dies and create an entire village of spooky, maybe a graveyard, along with that, that haunted home. It would be so fun. All right, so what I've done is I've added the glue almost to the edge, but not quite to the edge. And I'm just going to lay that down a little bit. Get my room. Situated like so. And then finally, I've got my wonderful raven. And he's just going to perch. Let's see, I was going to put him on the cauldron, but maybe I'll have him perch on the broom. No, I stick, I'm going to stick with the cauldron. All right, so there's my little scene. I'm going to go ahead and glue that down here. I think what I want to do is do a little accent of the green around the border just to pull it together. Um, I need a bigger piece of green. So this time I'm going to measure four by five and a quarter. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that. All right. You know, sometimes just a little bit of uh, an extra detail can make something look a little more finished.
This is this is one of those cards that has a lot of layers and it just it feels good. It has a nice heft to it and I like that. I think that um, you know getting getting a card isn't just about the image or the message. It's also the way it feels and the texture and the way the light catches on things. So this this card has all of the above, which makes it feel a little more, um, a little more like a gift in and of itself. So let's get this situated on here. that a second. So there's the front of the card and I may or may not stamp another message here. I have to think about that. That um, double double toil and trouble could be cute there but I'm not sure that I want to do that yet. In the meantime on the inside of the card I did cut out this Halloween banner and it looks something like this and I thought that would be really cute on the front of this little gift card holder. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on that. Just tiny tiny little dots of glue. Pretty good. And I also have little inserts for the letters, but I'm not going to do that on camera because that will take too long. I'll do that off camera and show you the finish after. And then finally, what I do want to do is I want to take my beautiful little Circe cat, glue her down. And I think that is super cute. All right, so there we go. It's the inside of the card. So if you have a gift card for somebody, you can just slip that in there. Excuse me while I get my head in here so I can see what I'm doing. So there is the gift card, but I'm wondering if a chocolate might fit in there. Probably not, but you never know. Well, that would fit, but you'd have to score the, um, you'd have to score the spine of the fold to just give it that little extra to hold that in place. 
but it will work. It will hold chocolate. But there you go. There's my little potions and spells Halloween card for you. I may or may not add something here. I actually have this. So that might be something, but I don't know yet. All right, I hope that gave you some ideas. If, oh, wait a minute, don't go yet. I forgot my bubbles. Well, I'll put those on with dimensionals after, but I've got, I've got those bubbles to add. I just found them on the desk here. Look at them all. All right, so those will go on. Thank you for watching. I'd love to see what you do with this set. I'm going to um, have a challenge, I think, in the watercolor and Stampin' Up! Paper Crafting Projects private group. And I think what we're going to do is send out a challenge for um, everybody to go ahead and create a Halloween card and um, hopefully incorporating some of the stamps and dies from the potions and spells. And we'll have a little uh, drawing at the end of... Um, Maybe we'll do it on Halloween night. We'll see. All right, so if you're not a member of the Watercolor and Stampin' Up! Paper Crafting Project group, you're invited to join us. All you have to do is place a comment below so I recognize your name, and then go to the group and ask to be invited in. And when I see your name there, I will let you in and you can join in the challenge of making a Halloween card for a possible prize. All right, so stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you next time.